New Year, New XFL, same Vince McMahon. The XFL is making a return to our screens next year, once again trying to do what no other league has done, survive multiple years during the NFL's offseason. It seems like such a paradox though, it's the NFL's offseason, so you don't need to compete with the NFL. And certainly there's, there's enough interest in football to sustain another league, but yet no league has been able to do it. And worse yet, the XFL seems to be falling into all the same traps that tanked the USFL, AAF, and even the XFL in its first go. So let's talk about how the XFL may be dooming itself before its schedule even starts and how they can actually come out on top. Let's start with the news of the day in the last couple days. The Detroit Lions were examining the possibility of bringing back Josh Johnson, a longtime NFL journeyman who had spent a month with the Lions earlier this season. With Detroit in free fall as Matt Stafford's injury looks season ending, Matt Patricia has been desperately searching for reinforcements. But the XFL would not allow them to look within its ranks. Johnson was assigned to the LA Wildcats and would not be released from his contract to play for the NFL. Pro Football Talk reported just a few days ago on the details of the contracts signed by XFL players, which includes exclusivity to the XFL. But why is this a problem? As Mike Florio writes for PFT, the XFL isn't competing with the NFL at all. Their season begins after the Super Bowl and ends one day after the NFL draft. But the NFL does not like anyone impeding on their territory at all. Florio says, quote, the NFL's position regarding spring leagues is that the NFL doesn't care about them unless and until they impact the NFL in a negative way. And stopping the NFL from signing a guy they want can certainly be considered impacting them in a negative way. Make no mistake, the NFL can tank any organization it wants at any time. Its finances are simply staggering, a machine even the mighty Vince McMahon can't compete with. And when it comes to Vince McMahon, the, the owner of the XFL, the creator of the XFL on both of its goes, it feels like this decision to keep players exclusively tied to the XFL is born directly out of his pride. If you've watched WWE at all, you're familiar with Vince McMahon and you're probably familiar with the weird dichotomy of his personality. On the one hand, his pride and ego is clear for all to see. He's one of the richest men in the country. He revolutionized an entire industry and created a worldwide corporation worth billions. His ego has caused him to exile his employees and his allies. But he's also the man who basically invented the phrase, what's good for business, at least as it relates to sports and entertainment. For as much as his pride affects his decisions, he's remarkably adept at swallowing that pride to make money. So it's his pride and ego that caused him and his company to give what can only be considered as a pro-company contract to all of these guys. But is it truly good for business to do it that way? Well, I don't think so. Like I said on its face, it seems like there shouldn't really be any competition between the NFL and XFL. But yet no other spring football league has ever survived for more than a couple seasons against the biggest corporation in American sports. It's no use debating why, but the real question is how to prevent it. And the answer, ironically, I believe, is to work with the NFL itself. Here's the thing. The NFL controls the sport of football. And if the NFL doesn't want you to exist, you won't exist. But the NFL has never truly had a league work with it before, unless you count NFL Europe, of course, which I don't. But the NFL could actually stand to benefit from a league keeping the football fever alive during the NFL's offseason. Not that the football fever dies out, but isn't it possible NFL fans would absolutely love the story of a guy balling out in the XFL to get rewarded with an NFL contract? The CFL, the Canadian Football League, is already a big enough brand itself that its players' goals are not to get to the NFL, rather to make a living in a different league. But if the XFL positions itself as a league where players get a chance to show their worth to the NFL, they'd occupy a space no league has ever been in before. And I'm not saying for the XFL to become some kind of minor league system, because then why would people even bother watching it? I'm suggesting a healthy working relationship between the XFL and NFL, 
a relationship where XFL players can be signed to NFL contracts when they're needed and players looking to prove themselves worthy in the eyes of NFL organizations will take their place. This way, the XFL's top stars won't just be marketable because of their XFL success, but because of their potential NFL future. People's passion for football doesn't go away in mid-February after the Super Bowl. People love football as much in April as they do in November. And if the league they're watching in April has implications for things we could see in November, people's passion will just be that much hotter. We don't live in a time when people will just forget guys that performed in the XFL in the months before the NFL season starts. That may have hurt leagues like the USFL in the past before the aids of social media, but now the story will never go away. Fox Sports and ESPN will report on these guys. Passionate football fans on social media like Twitter and YouTube, guys like Flemlo Raps, one of my favorite channels on YouTube personally, will talk about these guys. Flemlo actually suggested this same sort of idea in one of his videos. Now I understand it's, it's not the sexy option. I know there's a part of all of us that wants to see the little guy rise up and defeat Goliath. It's what sports are made for. But in reality, while David could beat Goliath, he can't beat a thousand of them. And that's what the NFL is. But if you can't beat them, join them. So maybe the XFL won't be the first league to usurp the all-powerful NFL. It won't be the first league in five decades to topple one of the four major sports organizations. But there is still a first out there for the XFL. They can become the first major professional league to actually stand side by side with one of the four major sports leagues. It's not competition that will sink the NFL. It's cooperation that will allow all other leagues to thrive.